This is The Right Connection. This podcast is designed to help you choose the right words and stories in your business content to create authentic connections with prospects, clients, partners, and colleagues. Now the host of The Right Connection, Catherine Burroughs. Hello and welcome to The Right Connection. Today, I'm doing a bridge episode between season two and season three because, oh my gosh, can you believe it? We're finishing up season two. It's almost been a year since I've been podcasting and it's been such a great, incredible journey. I've learned so much. I've had so much fun. I have met so many amazing people and been able to really connect with them and have super in-depth conversations with them. I've learned a lot about the process. I've learned a lot about myself and I feel like I've really come a long way. And a lot of that is thanks to my wonderful podcast producer, Carl Richards and coach. And he's back here with me today to talk about wrapping up season two and what's ahead for season three. So welcome, Carl. Thanks so much for being back on The Right Connection. Catherine, it is an absolute honor to be here. Are you sure you're at the end of season two? It doesn't seem like it's been a year already. Is it really almost a year? Time flies when you're having fun. Okay, well, at least you said you're having fun. That's the, <laughs> that's the most important piece here is the fun part. And I'll tell you, it's certainly been fun working behind the scenes. I'm not used to being on this side of your podcast. It's usually seeing it after you've recorded it with your guests. And, and certainly it's been, a, I know it's been a great journey for you through season one, certainly now through season two. Let's talk about some of your guests because I think you really nailed it with some solid guests in season two. Yeah, definitely. I really think that I got into a much better rhythm of finding people who really use stories in their business, who really communicate through stories with their clients and their prospects, and who really appreciate the power of words to make our businesses go forward and grow and really serve from that authentic place. I think you hit the nail on the head right there too, Catherine, when you're talking about the story element, because as we've learned, as you continue to learn with your speaking, and I know you know this with your writing, that stories are very important and very impactful to getting your message across. And all of your guests had some sort of story that not only enhanced their message in the moment, but also brought out more of their character and what they're all about. And that really sounded great on the show. And I love doing that. I love taking those deep dives into people's stories and hearing how they started their business, you know, the things they've learned along their way, how did they get to where they are now, and how do they use stories in their business to further those goals and dreams. So with your guests in season two, we're going to continue this theme throughout this episode is what did you learn? So with all the guests that you had and all the great stories that they brought to the table, What did you learn from the guests in season two? Well, it certainly confirmed for me that stories are essential and can be used in any industry for any type of client connection or customer connection. It doesn't matter if you have a product or a service, you can be a coach, a speaker, a podcaster, a consultant, an entrepreneur, whatever it is stories come into play at some point and they're really important to making those connections that lead to those long-term relationships that lead to sales and that mutual benefit that we're striving for where we're exchanging value. And that's hugely important, of course, in the business world. And and those stories certainly help to bring about that know, like, and trust factor before people will do business with you. So the stories certainly help. So Great learning lesson there. Let's talk about another part of season two, because I really like this component. And that's you had two series. One was a five-part series on the literary elements. Let's talk about that one, because that was very impactful. uh, And that's right in your wheelhouse of what you help people with all the time. And the other reason why stories work so well for creating connections is because they're fun. People enjoy stories. And the things that we enjoy about our favorite books and movies and TV shows, like the character and the plot and the setting and the theme and the language that's used, all of those things can be brought over into the business world for our business communications, Um, whether that's conversations, whether that's marketing, 
creating programs, online courses, giving webinars or keynote speeches, all of those benefit from those literary elements being included in the stories that we tell. But that wasn't the only series that you did. It was certainly very impactful. I really, really liked how you brought those themes together and continued the theme through. I really liked that. But then we also had a three-part series that you did, and that was basically your take on authenticity and how stepping into that authentic place is very relevant with your writing. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so this one came about when one of my coaches said, you need to be your ideal client in order to attract more of those ideal clients. So I am all about authenticity and bringing out the authentic character of my clients. So that kind of forced me to sit down and think, okay, well, what does it mean for me to then bring out my own authentic character more in the things that I do to reach out? So I spent some time thinking about it and of course, writing about it and <laughs> It came up with the three key things that have helped me to be more authentic with creating clarity, doing the work to get there, and then taking steps to communicate that authenticity effectively. Now, with those two series that you did, here's a question again. The theme <laughs> that we're continuing through is what did you learn in bringing that out to the audience from doing those two series specifically? it's a great way to reach out and pass along some of my learnings to others. And I love that I'm reaching out on a different platform uh, for people who prefer to learn or digest their content in a different form. It's something that people can refer back to because these things are a journey. And it's not something where we become our authentic selves and like, that's it. We check it off our list and we're done and we never go back to it. It's something that we keep circling back to. So we do that work and we make some strides and then we live in that for a while. And then maybe in a year or two, we come back to it and we reevaluate and we go deeper and we grow more. So I definitely want to have these podcasts available for people to go back and re-listen in six months or a year again, and hopefully they'll get more out of it. It's a tool that keeps coming back and keeps coming back because you're creating content, whether you're doing it for your own website or whether you brought somebody like Catherine in to help you write a book, uh, you're still going to be revisiting those things time and time again, then is what you're saying. Yes, for sure. And as your right. brand grows, as you bring in new offerings, and maybe your ideal client shifts a little bit, it's great to just go back over those things and make sure they're all still aligned with who you are authentically and the direction of your business every time you do one of those shifts. Yeah, it's very, very cool. And, and I'm glad you brought both of those components, both the literary elements and the authenticity piece, not together in two separate series, but said, hey, this is something to consider when you're, yeah, definitely when you're bringing your story your content to the surface. Let's talk about, again, I can't believe it's already been a year, but let's talk about the year in review, not in review, not in deep review, but let's talk about the year because when did you start your podcast again? May 13th? Uh, yeah, I think the 19th, but yeah. <laughs> okay, May. May 19th. It was the middle of May. Hard to believe it's been a year. I think it's been a great year from where we stand on the production end of things, but what have you learned this year? from doing your podcast? What big learning things have happened for you? Well, I mean, you know, I've talked about letting go of my script many, many times before. It bears touching on again, but I don't want to go into huge detail about it. So going from really wanting to write it word for word and just, you know, stick to that because I had so carefully selected every word and put them in this beautiful order and learning to let go of that and let the conversations flow and be more dynamic and more organic and feeling free to follow a tangent or, you know, ask a question that came out of something that maybe wasn't a planned question. So definitely that. And I think getting comfortable with the imperfect is a good lesson too. Like we're, we're all humans <laughs> and part of being authentic is that we're not perfect. 
So you know what we do sometimes say, um, and ah, we do sometimes struggle for the right word or mispronounce something and correct ourselves or forget what we were going to say or whatever that is. And just to like embrace those moments as part of our shared humanity and bring them into the podcast and make that more authentic as well. Are you on script right now? <laughs> I am not. <laughs> <laughs> I am so One far of the- off my script. I didn't even write any notes down. You wrote all the notes down. <laughs> and full disclosure, this is full the paper there. These are that you can't you can't see. Well, maybe you can sort of see it if you're seeing the video portion of this. There's maybe a few scribbles. Maybe you can kind of read that. I don't know. It's my chicken scratch. It's hard to read at the best of times, but there's literally not even 20 words written down as we have this conversation today. One of the greatest comparisons I like to make is, you know, when people say, oh, it has to be perfect, it has to be perfect. And if it's not perfect, then people won't listen or they won't get something out of it is some of the greatest music ever created is because of imperfection. Because when you dissect the music, you'll sometimes hear two notes that should never, ever, ever be played together if it's just those two notes. But when you wrap other notes and other things around it, all of a sudden, it sounds perfect, but it's not. And that's the same way that um, I approach podcasting. And I know that you've wanted to be on script. (laughs) And when you need to be on script, that's okay. But you've really embraced letting go the, okay, it has to be in this order and it has to sound like this. And that has, I'm assuming, brought out more of your authentic self and your ability to have authentic, real human conversations with people. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I know. Totally. And I know that I'm way off script when I start saying really a hundred times and every sentence starts with so and... (laughs) And I'm just like, you know what? That's okay. That's how I talk. People need to know that. (laughs) And the reason why we record, and I always share this with people who want to go live. They say, well, I'd like to do my podcast live. And I go, "Mm, do you really want to do that? Because it allows you to make some mistakes, throw in a ton of ums and ahs if you need to. So a guy like our producer, Karen, can fix it and make it sound good. So the product that's going out is stellar, still human, still some of those human elements in there. The authenticity piece is still there, but it's not so polished and perfect that it looks like you've possibly seen speakers or seen even things on television or on Netflix where you know it's just too rehearsed. And you go, well, I really liked it, but I wasn't connecting with it because it was too rehearsed. There was too much polish on it. That's the way I look at times too. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, but writing is the same way. I think there's a certain authenticity piece to writing, which if we're not, again, it depends on the type of writing that you're doing, but when we're talking business books and people are using their voice in print, and I know you understand this, if we're not allowing some imperfection within that, somehow in the writing process, you know that more than I do, that process, but it seems less human and authentic, right? Yeah, I think it's so important to remember that we can still be professional and yet sound human. Like we're not abandoning all the conventions and we don't want to just be, you know, whatever, coughing through and humming and hawing through our whole podcast, or, you know, we don't want to write a book where every sentence starts with the word and, because you're really not supposed to do that in proper English. But you know what? We all do that when we speak. And with business writing, we're aiming to be entertaining and of value to human beings. And so we need to meet them where they're at and speak the way that they speak and also bring in the author's voice and speak the way the author would speak. So yeah, I do have sentences that start with and in the books I write and you know, two or three word sentences that are more slang and something you might associate more with the spoken word than the written word. But I think bringing that blend in, like really when someone's reading your business book, they should feel like they're sitting down and having a coffee with you. You know, maybe you're still wearing some jeans and a nice business shirt, but you're in an informal setting, you're chatting, you know, you're getting a little bit personal, not way beyond the boundaries of professional, but you know, you're letting someone in and you're sharing from who you are. And 
that's where those connections come in, where that reader feels like they're really part of that story. They're sitting beside you, having that coffee and sharing your experience. And that's a very unique style of the written word because there's many different types of writing, just like there's many different types of speaking. And a professional like Catherine is going to help you in bringing that, whatever your messaging is, and that's part of the process. She'll say, how do you want to sound? Do you want it to sound? Like, well, what do you need in there? Anyways, not going to get into that nuts and bolts. Great lessons learned there. Oh, man, I'm so excited for season three because a little bit of a shift for you. So let's talk about that pivot because the direction you're going in, by the way, you're still going to have a podcast. You're not abandoning your show, but there's going to be some things that will be different for season three. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I definitely don't want to abandon my podcast. I'm so in love with my podcast. I don't know why I didn't do this years ago because I love it so much and I can't say that enough. (laughs) Season three, I want to bring in some more of the teaching element and I want to bring that together with some of my guests who've experienced going through those lessons and really have them talk to those lessons and what it felt like before and after and how the process went for them. And I'm going to have you back, Carl, to talk about your five myths that are stopping people from podcasting. And this is something that you and I've been working on together because those are very similar to the five myths that are stopping people from writing a book. So we're going to be having some conversations around that topic for sure any sneak peeks other than me who will be joining you. And I'm so blessed to be coming back to share that because business growth happens all the time. And I'm excited to share that growth and that development. And you've got some business growth and development that you'll be sharing in season three as well. And some great things that I know you're working on. And yes, some stuff that we're working on together, which is really cool. Some very exciting things there, but any other hints or sneak peeks at season three guests, maybe? Well, I have Hilda Gann. I've actually already done that interview. She is an HR professional and she talks about rewriting the narrative in the workplace. So HR is maybe not a place where you would think that stories would come into play, but they absolutely do. And I've also got some other guests coming up, Evans Putman, Michelle Abraham, and Nim Stant, just to name a few. So Evans and Michelle are both in the podcasting field and Nim is in the publishing field. In fact, she's going to be publishing my own business book later this year. So obviously I'm going to be talking about my book more too. (laughs) So yeah, and giving updates on other offerings that are coming up. I'm just in the middle of refreshing my website. Hopefully that's going to go live by the end of April. So new offerings coming there, starting some online courses and group programs and just so many things coming up. It's going to take all of season three to unpack it. And congratulations on that. It's great when you have content. And I know that sometimes as a podcaster, and maybe you experienced this in season one, maybe in season two as well, where you go, who's my next guest going to be? Or what content am I going to share with people? And that's where you, you know, you bring in somebody like me or someone else that you know, like and trust where you can have a conversation and sort of brainstorm that through. But you know that when, once you find that sweet spot for content and guests that there's an endless stream of it, it's just getting and latching onto that. And I think you've done that well in season two. I can't wait for season three. Thank you for inviting me into the fold to talk about season two and yeah, season three. Let's go. Yes. And don't forget to let me know what you've thought so far of seasons one and season two. You can do the ratings on Spotify or Apple. You can also send me an email, Catherine at CatherineBurrowsCreative.com. I'll put that in the show notes. And thanks so much for listening today. I really hope that this episode has inspired you to tell your own story more creatively. Please join me next time for more about how words and stories from our authentic selves create the right connection. Thanks so much for listening today. I hope something in today's episode inspired you to tell your own story more creatively. Please join me next time for more about how authentic words and stories create the right connection. Thanks for listening to The Right Connection. What did you think of the show today? Give us a rating and leave us a comment. If you have a question for Catherine, 
reach out to her by sending her an email, the right connection at CatherineBurrowsCreative.com or visit her website, CatherineBurrowsCreative.com. And don't forget to follow Catherine on social media. Thanks again for listening to The Right Connection.